You know the average American right now, the average person in the world, our attention span has dropped to five seconds. The sad news is the average goldfish has six seconds. We're now competing with goldfish and the goldfish are winning. <laughs> Money doesn't bring happiness, but the absence of money brings unhappiness. This has been proven all over and over. You have to have a margin of safety, some money in the bank account. If every paycheck you're freaked out, your love life is gonna suffer. Happiness is like soup. It's like if you make chicken noodle soup, but you forget the chicken, it's not chicken noodle soup. Optimizing your life for hustling and grinding is like optimizing your life around going peak. No, P is something you have to do. It's not the goal. You don't go, woo! You know what my goal is? Hit the toilet seven times a day. No, but you have to do it to survive. So grinding and working hard and hustling is not what you optimize for. It's pain. Why would you optimize for pain? But as in this, it is a necessity. If you look at an actual scientific explanation of what makes you successful, it is not just hard work. If that's true, construction workers would be the wealthiest people in the world. Waiters and busboys, they work harder than the owner. The most scientific psychometric personality test is called Hexaco. Much more accurate than Myers-Briggs, INFJ, ENTP, all that stuff. And it's been proven over and over by scientists, conscientiousness is the most correlated with business success. The so then it divides into four sub facets, organization, perfectionism, diligence, and prudence. So the real truth is hard work is 25% of the formula because diligence is known in the common language as hard work, okay? So if you just think diligence alone will get you success, you're like a basketball player that thinks you'll play in the NBA because you can shoot free throws. But they don't play in the NBA because the NBA is not all about free throws. So NBA is scoring, defense, free throws maybe is one component, rebounding, assists is a lot of components. I can't tell you how much better my life is and anybody watching this will be if you wake up every single day and you take 10 minutes. I have yellow notepads sitting all around my house. I got that from Bill Gates. Bill Gates built Microsoft at 17 by locking himself in a hotel room with six yellow notepads and he wrote out the whole basic code for DOS and things that built Microsoft, okay? He became the richest man in the world 18 years straight because he was organized enough to lock himself in a room and think through his day. And whenever I do this, I have a great day. Whenever I don't, I notice it. Be organized a little bit, 10 minutes. I actually have this little couch thing outside of my shower and I put a notepad by it. I take a shower when I wake up. I walk over to that, I kind of sit there and I just write out, I mean, it can be as little as three main projects you want to get done that day. The last one is something called prudence. Scientists call this prudence. Prudence is the ability to make the right decisions. Let's say our goal is like that camera right there. So let's assume that's north. So I have this compass in my brain and my goal is to go right there. Let's say it's a mile away, so north. What happens if society, my upbringing in school, wired my compass exactly backwards? But I know I wanna go north, so I pull out my, my compass and it points that way. So I just take off walking and I do it in an organized fashion. I do it in a perfectionist manner. I'm perfecting my steps and my posture. I'm also working on, you know, hard work and hustle. Keep walking towards your goal. Well, the truth is, if you go south when you should go north, you could have gone one mile, but the earth is about 24,000 miles in circumference. So you get to walk 24,000 miles and you'll come up on the backside and you will get your goal. That's most entrepreneurs. The average person takes 20 years to become a 90% of businesses fail within the first five years, 80 to 90, depending on what statistic. Most people, I did the math once, the average American has $60,000 saved by the time they're about 60 years old. The art of living and getting to your objective is long, but it doesn't have to be. It's long if your compass is backwards. I'm trying to take myself and point it to the true north. And you have to learn that from books and mentors and life experience and listening and they help adjust your compass. And most people are gonna get what they want just about 40 years longer. And that, I live in Beverly Hills, trust me. You go to downtown Beverly Hills, full of Ferraris, the most Ferraris per capita in anywhere in the world. Every one of the guys is 80 or 90. Why do you want a Ferrari at 80 or 90? And I've wondered like, why the heck is everybody 90 in, in this town? And I realized we're set up for failure 
because we think we're going north, but we're going south. That's why 50% of people who get married divorce, 80% of businesses fail. Are there like key principles though that you can use to turn that compass so north actually points north? Yes, admit you're lost. And that one's hard for people. The admittance of the fact that you're still lost, it gets you on track a lot faster. So if you're watching this and you feel lost, it's better to just sit down and be like, I'm lost. Because the day you admit you're lost is the day you allow yourself to be found by people who can give you a tip. And people argue with me about mentors. No, just use your own gut feeling. Is that how you learn English? When you were two years old, you use your gut feeling to start conjugating verbs? No, you learn from other people. You learn manners, you learn language, you learn all things valuable. You learn to drive from another person. So doesn't it make sense you learn life? So books are just the mentors who maybe are dead now. You wanna learn about Steve Jobs? He ain't alive to teach you. Warren Buffett, who I think is the best businessman by far in the world, because 200 billion in revenue, he reads eight hours a day. He said he slowed down in his old age, he only reads 500 pages a day. Bill Gates goes on reading vacations. Mark Zuckerberg just start, started a reading once a week book club on Facebook and already got a couple million uh, followers. And now with audio books, there's no excuse. You got YouTube videos, let this thing run in the background. And it's better if you can find it. I mean, better than books is in-person mentor. That's why I do a podcast. If you can pick up one gold nugget, whether it's from an in-person mentor, whether it's from a book, you become very wealthy in knowledge very quickly. One nugget a day, one nugget a day. It's like Charlie Munger, Warren Buffett's business partner said, step by step you get ahead, but not necessarily in fast spurts. But you have to prepare for the fast spurts by learning step by step. The last time I saw Elon Musk, I've had some very interesting conversations with this guy. He's one of the smartest guys I've ever met. He loves Hollywood. He's always at red carpet things I go to. So we're in the bathroom and he comes in. I said, hey, you know, Elon, eh, we talked about books last time. He goes, oh yeah, I remember you, you're the social media guy. He goes, I got a question for you, man. Do you think I should use Snapchat to grow Tesla? So I was like, okay. He goes, I know you know about Snapchat, tell me so. I start talking to him. 20 minutes later, <laughs> what do you think? After I gave him my long diatribe, he goes, I think you're wrong, but thank you. And then he walked off. And I was like, this guy is so smart. I realized, you talk about checkmate. I was an idiot because I should have flipped the conversation to get him to teach me for 20 minutes. I gave him all my jewels and he walked away with them like a smart guy. Like Drake says, <clears throat> if you don't have haters, you ain't popping. <laughs> so welcome to the world. You want to pop, you're going to get hate. I see people making fun of the Kardashians. I'm like, you're going to make fun of the Kardashians? Look, Kylie Jenner, the youngest Kardashian in the last 18 months has done $400 million in revenue on lipstick kits and various makeup things with Kylie Cosmetics. Put that in perspective, L'Oreal, Maybelline, massive brands. It took them 50 years as an organization with thousands of employees to do what Kylie Jenner did by herself at 20 at 18. You're gonna laugh at the Kardashians? Do you have to agree with everything the Kardashians? No, but so you can just go into the Kardashians, reverse engineer their success, go I like this, I like this, I like this, I don't like that, then leave out what you don't like. I started Google AdWords in 2001. I got lucky, I just stumbled and I was one of the first people to ever use online advertising. I was in, I think, the second month Google AdWords launch. We're the most spoiled generation. This computer on this phone, iPhone 7, is more powerful than the first rocket that put man on the moon that cost billions of dollars. Now we get that for under a thousand bucks. And people are still like, I'm lost. Yes, you're lost. Sit down and then open up Safari and go, how to do Google ads. And you're gonna come up, let's see what I come up with. AdWords, they have their own tutorial. Then you have some free stuff on HubSpot. Charlie Munger calls it assiduity. Put your ass in a chair. Sit there and focus without being, you know the average American right now, the average person in the world, our attention span has dropped to five seconds. The sad news is the average goldfish has six seconds. We're now competing with goldfish and the goldfish are winning. <laughs> so if you don't have assiduity to sit down, read, there is no solution for you. You will always be poor because you'll always be beat by somebody who's willing to sit in the chair. You ever heard this myth? Everything happens for a reason, so just accept it. Well, there's kind of truth to that. If I jump off a building and break my legs, yes, everything happened for a reason. The reason was gravity. 
Like that's why you break your legs in physics. That, but people interpret everything happens to a reason, be like, well, I was meant to learn from that thing and then BS that can learn through other people's in trial and error. Anybody here ever had to be hit by a car to learn to look both ways? I didn't. I kind of learned from just somebody telling me, big car, two tons, velocity, smash, dead. And I now always look both ways. If your myth is that the only way you're gonna learn is just through massive mistakes and trial and error. You haven't read Richard Dawkins' book. If you believe in evolution, why do we have big brains? Because we do have the biggest brains. It's to be able to what Richard Dawkins called project. So you can literally sit in this chair and predict outcomes without having to do them. But I can predict that if I download what you did, it's gonna go better for me statistically. And that skill makes you a powerful person. So I think one of the myths of society is we won't let pain in, we just excuse it all away. Like, no, that was meant to happen. Oh, you wasted 20 years of life married to the wrong person in the wrong career? No, no, it was meant to happen. Where's the people who go, you fucked up, dude. <laughs> you wasted 20 years and you will never get it back. And I was lucky enough to sit next to Kobe Bryant for the last like three games of his career. One of his players, I won't say who, was having a bad game. Kobe Bryant yells out at him, Dude, you suck. And he wasn't joking, okay? It was shocking to me. Ron Artest was sitting next to him and he goes, this positive reinforcement thing is way overrated. People need to hear the truth. He turned around and looked at Kobe and I was so impressed. He said, I know. He literally sat down and said, yep, I'm lost this game. And I kid you not, the rest of the game, he had an he excelled. He scored like 10, 12 points off the bench after that. And I was, I was like, see, this Kobe guy gets it. He's a winner. You can't always just bring pleasure. He didn't say, yo, Kelly, you're kind of not playing well, but you know, it's all happening for a reason. Or he just said, dude, you suck. It was like that. And I'm just going, this is the real Kobe. Like, and if they were a 14 year old kid and Kobe came and said, you suck, 999 out of a thousand kids break. The other one kid goes on to be the next yes. Kobe Bryant, right? Yep. One of the symptoms of a narcissist, it's not just like, oh, I like to look in the mirror, right? That's what we think of narcissists. One of the classic symptoms is very thin skin. They're always offended. If you have a friend that anything you say constructively, they fall apart, it's almost always narcissism. We live in a society that's very narcissistic. You're told like, oh, everybody's a winner. No, not everybody's a winner. That's like saying everybody's blonde. There's a definition of what blonde is. Blonde is like this yellowish hair. Well, everybody doesn't win. And the sooner you wake up to that, then you get a little fear in you. And when you get a little fear in you, you start listening. Let a little fear come in and drive you and motivate you. You know that old cliche, you never be the smartest person in the room and all that. It's, I have a better way to say it. Be around people who make you uncomfortable at the ego level. But get around someone where you're like, I kinda don't fit in. And because we're all narcissists because of society and Instagram and all this, we don't like to be uncomfortable because a narcissist's story to themselves is, you're the best. Let's say you have 155 IQ. That's what Bill Gates has and Albert Einstein. My step-grandfather had 155 IQ. He speaks 14 languages fluently. He can write Chinese. If you're smart, you can do that. If you're not, I got good news for you. I'm not that smart, but you can hire 155 IQs. But that's an example of what I'm talking about of this rewiring. Right. <laughs> so these practical things will change your life. So your mind wants to tell you you're amazing. You have to override that and go, you know what, I'm not that amazing. It's the reason I show Lamborghinis and Ferraris, is I got a lot of young followers. And you know what 19 year old guys like? Lamborghinis and Ferraris. So I show that part of my life because then they listen to the other stuff. So first you gotta lead by inspiration. This has been proven over. You cannot pound stuff into people's brain. People actually do the opposite. When parents tell their kids, you gotta read, nobody reads. But if I show a Lamborghini and Ferrari, which is the reward that people want, and then people go, how do you get it? I said, see all these books, I read them and put it. Then people, uh, I have more school kids reading books, I think, than anyone in history. I'm telling you, it astounds me. Because all I had to do was put up a video with Lamborghinis. Berkshire Hathaway Conference. It's the first week of May of every year. These dudes are gonna die soon. 
Charlie Munger, Warren Buffett. You can buy a B share for under 500 bucks. Buy a B share, you get a free ticket. It's insane. You sit there with two men on stage in a stadium of 18,000 of the top investors in the world. Wow. Cost you under 500 bucks. You sit there, it's only one day. I fly into Omaha and fly back out almost the same day. And you walk out just motivated. That first year I went, I sat next to a guy. And then I, on the way out, I talked to him and I found out he's basically one of the richest guys in Europe. And we became friends and he flew me to Germany to speak to, he has 17 CEOs who work for his different companies. And I talked to this guy, his name is Norman Rentrop. He explained how he built a media empire starting at age 12 to now he's in his 60s. He let me download 40 years of experience. I think it's not coincidental that the next year I grew on social media. And he told me like, here's how you do it. And it just absorbed and within six months, I was doing all the big stuff that people see on social media. Get out of the house. You will not grind it in front of your laptop 14 hours a day to success. Go to conferences, go to seminars. Well, you never know who you're sitting next to. I've probably gone to 20 events in 20 days. If you'd put $100 in Bitcoin in 2010, you would have $75 million today in your bank account. Is that working hard or is that making good decisions?